Kate is under house arrest and being investigated by Romanian prosecutors for accusations including rape, human trafficking and exploiting women, which he denies. The BBC challenged him on whether his views about women broadcast to his millions of online followers harmed young people. As All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I've been off for a while. Had a sinus infection. Wasn't good. Voice was off. I was literally nasally right through for the last three weeks. So this is what happens when you live in a desert and, you know, the weather changes and, the, you know, but anyway, I'm back. So, listen, this is an interesting subject. I want you guys to stay tuned right to the end because I'm trying to bring you guys some serious, serious knowledge. And it's about the Andrew Tate BBC interview. I, I'm, a, I'm sure some of you guys have seen it already, but I want to give you my two cents on it. Now, please... Please, guys, I know some of you don't like Andrew Tate because when I've quoted him in the past, especially on Instagram, you guys, some of you get a little bit triggered. But the point I'm trying to make is very, very clear. And I want to make, I want to make sure that this hammers home to you guys. Gentlemen, stop thinking emotionally about Mr. Tate. I am not a follower. I'm not a disciple. I am simply someone who sees information, deciphers it, and come to a conclusion based on my rational thinking about the world. I use my critical thinking skills. Let me repeat that. Critical thinking skills. Now, a lot of you have not had critical thinking training because this is something that usually isn't taught in schools. And that will bring me to my next subject, because I would like you all to understand that critical thinking skills is something that I taught my two daughters from the age of four. From age four, I bought them a bunch of cue cards that taught them critical thinking skills. That's the reason why by age five and six, they discovered that Santa Claus, the story that we were telling them as parents, the fantasy was bullshit because my daughter deduced that there was no chimney in our house in the desert here in Dubai. So if there's no chimney, how the hell did this fat guy get in our house? Then she got quite upset and scared of the fact that there was someone trying to break in her window. She didn't care about the presence. She was quite concerned that there was no chimney. So the only other way that this person could have gotten in secretly in our house was to come through the window. At that point, I couldn't keep up the illusion. I did not feel comfortable dragging out the lie to my young daughters. So I said, ah, listen, it's mommy and daddy that's buying you these presents. At that point, my younger daughter says, she's four at this point. She says, I knew it, daddy, because everything that I told mommy that I wanted for Christmas, I got it. She only told her mother. Her critical thinking brain had already developed to make her understand that if I only told my mother and my mother keeps secrets, she must have been the person buying the gifts. Do you understand the beauty of critical thinking? This is what I want you guys to try to understand. When I look at the Andrew Tate scenario, and when I watch the news and when I watch politics, I am constantly putting my critical thinking skills to task. Nothing else. I take out the emotion. So with that said, let's get into the Andrew Tate uh, video and let me give you my two cents on where I see the bullshit. All right, here we go. We are doing an interview with you because you're facing some very serious allegations. Correct. Rape human trafficking, yep. and also because there's a great deal of concern about the things you say and the impact that they have on young people, on women. I don't think the concern's about the things I say. I think the concern is for the level of influence I have and the reach I have. Let's start with the allegations. All right. Listen to what Andrew just said. He says it's not the concern of what he said. It is because of the influence he has. 
So I want you to break this down critically. Imagine if he didn't have the following, right? Do you think that anything that he said would trigger any of these people? The answer is no. So the point is his following, the size of his following, the size, the size is what he's talking about. That is what people are concerned about. And I will demonstrate this as we go further on. Have you raped anybody? Absolutely not. Have you trafficked anybody? Absolutely not. Exploited any women for Absolutely money? Absolutely not. But you have admitted using emotional manipulation to get women to work in the webcam industry for you. No. We have an open criminal investigation. I am absolutely not really sure I'll be found innocent. I know the case better than you. I know it intimately and you don't. I have seen all the criminal files and the evidence against me and you haven't. I know the truth of what happened and you don't. And I'm telling you absolutely not really, I've never hurt anybody, that the case that's been put against me is completely and utterly fabricated and I'm never going to be found guilty of anything. And it's very difficult for me to answer your in-depth questions because we're sitting here inside of the territory of Romania. I am beholden to the Romanian legal system and I'm not going to incriminate myself. Let me read you then what you have said about what you have done. Sure. You have said, my job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, get her to fall in love with me to the point where she'd do anything I say and then get her on webcam so we, we could become rich together. All right. Let's break that down. So what if he said it? The point is, these things are said all the time on the internet by millions of women. How to manipulate men to get them to do what you want them to do. Okay, pick up artists, use these techniques. I understand what Andrew was saying. He's denying it now that he said it. But it's irrelevant whether he said it or not. The point is, and the problem is, the optics right now with the masses watching, when you pull something out of context, it doesn't look good. Of course it doesn't look good. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't please women's soft palate. Things have to be sweet and soft for women to absorb it. But listen to what she said. Manipulate women in order for them, both of them, to make money um, so we, we could become rich together please tell me now if a woman didn't see the upside of being with a man who was convincing her in a business opportunity where they both benefited do you think any of these legally aged girls would refuse no every single one of these freaking women are chasing the bag they see opportunity to make a lot of money, go to foreign countries, fly on, 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 on freaking private jets. They're going to jump on it. Jeez, man. Women do less than that these days. You watch any video where all of these gold diggers are coming out of the woodwork, trying to manipulate men and, and falling into the, the, the gold digger traps. Women are opportunities. That's it. They see an opportunity. Men give them an opportunity. You think they give a shit about love? They don't care about love. They see opportunity. Sure, sure you have to convince them emotionally because that's all they respond to. They don't respond to cold, hard, freaking facts about business. No, that's not how you talk to women, especially girls who, are, who, who, who want to push the narrative of, yeah, I got on the boat. Yeah, I got on the private jet. Yeah, I flew to Romania. Yeah, I made a ton of money. There are millions of girls right now on OnlyFans just because they weren't convinced to do it or let's use the other word, manipulated to do it, that it's okay. Women only make decisions because they see an upside. None of these women are complaining afterwards. You think these women that are coming out of the woodwork or the girl that's coming out of the woodwork now claiming that she was manipulated, you don't think that there's an upside to what she's doing? She knows that she's going to make even more money. It's either that or one that didn't make enough money and now she sees an opportunity to make more. I mean, there's so much, these videos have been flying around about who this woman is and who these women are and how they had actually focused on manipulating this particular court case in order to make money. So 
let's use your critical thinking brain again get rid of your emotions a woman who sees an upside who can get some dick get on a plane and make money she's going to do it and then if it goes well she's not complaining if it doesn't go well she's going to say oh i was manipulated and coerced and i, w I was i was told how bad it oh i did i wasn't told about uh, Oh, <laughs> then she'll complain. Or if she wants more, she'll go even one step further. She will try to bring your ass down so that she could climb on your ass to get more. That's the nature of females. That's what they're trying to do here. Let's proceed. So we, we could become rich together. I don't think that's what I personally said. I think that's, that's exactly what no, you said on your website. That's a, that's, no, I've never said that. That's something that you found on the internet. Doesn't mean I've said it. In and, your words. And, and again, once again, if any female on the planet has a problem with me, I strongly recommend her to go to the police and try and pursue me yeah, for criminal I, charges. Yeah. I'm actually such a nice person. You know, the I've BBC never had has spoken to somebody since your arrest who the says idea exactly that... those things. That with you, it's all manipulation. Right, There's an ulterior motive Sophie? to everything you do. Is this you Sophie? Know. Oh, it's Sophie. The, the, the fake name, no face. No I was so the, the intent on wanting invented. to please him and wanting him to be happy that I was just kind of, yeah, okay, do whatever you want. And what is she accu has she accused me of a crime, this imaginary Sophie? No. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to please him. I'll do whatever you want. Seriously, guys, think about it. How many times these women actually manipulate men under the guise of sex and relationship and then suck that man dry and then laugh at him on the internet? Please tell me how often that happens. Every single second of the day. Every single second. But the minute a man partly manipulates a woman, right? He's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. But Andrew can't say that here. Because if he pushes back saying, women do it all the time, it then kills the narrative and it makes him sound like, he did it. So in this case, because of optics, how it looks, he has to stand firm, go into denial mode, because then he can go to court and it could be used against him. So he has to do what he has to do right here. Can't blame him. I think I heard him say that in some of the videos in the past, but that's the reality of life, man. Both genders are constantly manipulating each other, convincing each other, enticing each other. I could use all of these flowery words, but the only time the words are used negatively is when it concerns a man. The man always gets the manipulated word. The woman always get the woman always gets the word where oh she finessed him or she used her charm. She used her beauty. She used her femininity to get what she want. So what? Women do that. Women have been doing that since the beginning of time. But when a man does it, oh no, no, no. No, that's manipulation. It's dark. It's creepy. That's not allowed. Let's proceed. She's making the point that there is a she accused me of a crime? emotional or psychological manipulation. I've asked you a question and I've allowed you into my house. I'm asking you a question. Correct, but you're... Emotional or psychological manipulation. Think about that shit. I convince a woman to do something where we're going to both make money. Emotional and psychological manipulation. Because I told her, hey, I love you. I put the two together. Women do it every day. You see... You guys got to understand, you guys have to understand the manipulation that's been done to us by the media. It's not plain fear. This push, this feminist push, this matriarchal push where we must submit as men is where the problem is. When men do anything bad, it's a problem. When women do anything bad, oh, she's just strong and independent and, and looking out for herself. Blows my mind. Tell me I'm wrong. Show me, ladies, where I'm wrong. I'm not the boss here because I've allowed you into my house. I'm asking you the questions. Correctly, and I'm telling you. You get to decide the answers. No, 
we're equal here. I've allowed you into my house. You don't come here with a position of authority. I'm doing you the favor as legacy media, giving you relevance by speaking to you. And I'm telling you now, this Sophie, which the BBC has invented, which there's no face of, nobody knows who she is. The BBC and as, did not invent Of her. course not. And she, because you never invent anything. And she is not, <laughs> she's not filed criminal yeah. charges against me. What are we talking about here? What we're is she talking exactly. about emotional manipulation Has into the sex industry. Emotional manipulation. Once again, we're back to that one problem. They can't find anything illegal that he did. Emotional manipulation. When a woman do it, she's using her charm. It's very obvious that this reporter is trying to paint Andrew Tate in the worst possible light. This is not an interview. This is a hatchet job, plain and simple. Listen, I'm, I grew up with the BBC, BBC World Service, the news brought to you by, and I had to, that has sunk into me and I had so much respect for the BBC and the way they would, would present the news. As I grew older and I started to understand that news was no longer just about giving us information. It is about manipulation. It is about eyeballs. All of these bloody channels have now lost their credibility. The CNNs, the NBC, the ABCs, every single one of them are simply a manipulation machine. They all have the same agenda. Whether it's right or left, they have an agenda. Andrew Tate has gotten to the point where he is competing. Andrew Tate has built himself as one individual who has built himself into what they are losing, a powerful voice of influence. They have to shut that shit down. This man, can change freaking governments if he so chooses, if more people understood him. That is scary for governments and corporations. That is too much power in the hands of one man. That's That, my friends, is where the problem is. Understand why they're trying to shut him down. If you want to understand who they are, I just describe it to you. Governments corporations, news channels, all of these entities all work to try to get control of your mind. If they control you, they can tell you what to do and suck as much money from you as possible. Andrew Tate isn't doing anything different, but it goes against their narrative because their narrative is to make men weak. That's why the agenda of of, of this trans and the, the whole pansexual and the whole craziness of making men more female and making ma female more male is wreaking havoc on society. We are literally looking at the demasculination of men. Okay? The, the, the idea of being a masculine man these days is literally a bad word. And this is what concerns me. Even today, pick up my daughter from school. She comes in the car. Hey, queen. And I'm like, who, who are you talking to? It's just something I've been using today at school. Just something I've been hearing at school today. I'm like, don't, don't ever, ever look at your father and call him a queen. Do you know what it even means? No, just, just joking. I said, when you call a man a queen, it literally means that he's gay, he's soft. Don't ever call me a queen. I'm your father. I'm not your friend. Remember that. I love you. I kiss her on the forehead. And I said, I asked her, I said, you call guys this? Yeah, I said to a few guys. I said, how did they take it? Well, they didn't say anything. And I said, I said, precious. Don't, I call her precious. I said, don't, don't ever say that to a man. It basically implies that he's soft, softy. Men don't want to hear that. Okay. Don't use it. Stop that. Don't use that term again. She says, okay, done. But this is where we are at with our society. This is where we're at, where the girls are using terms for men that 10, 15, 20 years ago, you couldn't even, if you call any boy a queen or any word that implies that he was soft, it would have been a fight, okay? Anyway, let's proceed with the interview, if this is what it is. Let's proceed with the hatchet job. Industry for your financial gain. A absolute garbage. I'm describing 
women who are going to court to accuse you of rape and human Sophie trafficking. Sophie hasn't gone to court. Sophie doesn't And I'm describing women who have spoken to the BBC at length. Sophie doesn't exist. And other media ex organisations about what they say is emotional manipulation and coercion. And I'm quoting back to you your own words where you describe... They're not my words. ...coercion They're words and emotional manipulation. They're words you found on the internet and Sophie doesn't exist. On your so let's website, move on to the next subject. in your voice. Let's move on to the next subject. No, I think I'll stick on this one for a minute. So there's other places in that same website where you say you get girls to fall in love with you and they do it because they love you, because they want to do what you say. Convincing women to take part in some kind of business arrangement doesn't work long term because they're emotional. You've got to get them to fall in love with you. These women aren't doing it because they love you. They're going to be doing it because they see an upside for themselves. No woman, no modern day woman is going to do something that does not benefit her financially. This so-called reporter is trying to push the narrative that, no, that's manipulation, that's illegal. Then it should be illegal for women as well. Once that's again, coercion, that's emotional manipulation, that's abuse. What you've found are clips from the internet some text from the internet, and you're going to sit here and tell me that that's the reason I should be... Your website, it. your words. It's not my website. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Check my website. Next. It's the website you've taken down, and I wonder why those comments have been taken down. No, website, no website's been taken down. My website is the same, and it's been the same for a very long time. You are accusing me, I'm guessing, what you're trying to say is you're accusing me, and you're trying to say that I'm guilty of the things I'm accused of, and that I'm emotionally manipulating people. I'm saying that you have said you emotionally manipulated people here for your own financial gain. No, absolutely not. It's not only about the criminal allegations. It's a, a much bigger issue. You've got children's organisations in the UK, you've got rape organisations in the UK, you've got the police naming you by name as someone who has a harmful influence on children and on women in the UK and elsewhere because of the things you say, because of the way you present gender relations, the way you say men should treat women. That's very upsetting. And the reason that's very upsetting is because I know that's not true. I'm genuinely a good person. I believe my impact on the world is positive. The this reason we're asking you about these comments is because we've got the chief executive of Rape Crisis naming you individually as spreading a dangerous ideology of misogynistic rape culture. Absolute. It's the comments you make. I have listened to practically every single Andrew Tate video. Nowhere in there where Andrew encourages men to go out and take a woman forcefully. You know, the idea that if a man say to be strong and be a man, for some reason, this woman is telling Andrew and accusing and trying to tell us, the viewers, that he should be charged for being a man. And because organizations which are failing at taking care of boys and, and kids in the UK and in the US, because both of those Western societies, even in France, all across Europe, they're failing men. Men are revolting. Men are saying enough. And I'm talking about real men. I'm not talking about these half men that they've created. These half men that were created by single mothers. I'm talking about boys who want to remain boys or grow up to be men. These are the followers of Andrew Tate. You got to understand that Andrew literally is just a voice that they gravitated to because they realized that their identity was being threatened. It's not the reverse. You got to understand that channels like these are, I mean, you have no idea how many men how many boys are calling in and talking to me and asking me questions about just normal boy shit. Just how to be a man. How to deal with this world that they're now in that they don't understand. Because if they become what they naturally want to be, they're told that that's wrong. Total and utter confusion for most boys. So Andrew is literally a voice that these people gravitated to because of their problems. Not the other way around. Feminism is what has created the environment for these boys and men to gravitate towards people like Andrew Tate and channels such as this. It's not the other way around. And this is what this woman failing to understand. His popularity is this great because there's a need. There's a need for men like him. Let's proceed. 
that are leading people to say things like Absolute this. Absolute garbage. National organisations who are saying that are blaming you for increasing levels of misogyny. Schools that are saying they are having increased incidents of girls being attacked, of female teachers being harassed. If that was by true, pupils that, because of you and your teaching well, and your influence. That's absolute garbage. I have never, ever encouraged a student to attack a teacher, male or female, ever. I preach hard work, discipline. I'm an athlete. I preach anti-drug. I preach religion. I preach no alcohol. I preach uh, no knife crime. Every single problem with modern society, I'm against. But I'm men teaching young men. I'm teaching young men to be disciplined, to be diligent, to listen, to train, to work hard, to be exactly like me. And I'm saying that if men grew up like me, which are hardworking and diligent and some emotional control and stoic, we're going to have a better society, not a worse society. To sit here and say that schools in England, England, which is a failing nation, which has knife crime going through the roof, violence going through the roof, men's mental health going through the roof, and they're going to all blame me because I appeared on the internet. There's no male teachers in schools anymore. This is the problem. So these boys are being taught by women. At home, they're brought up by a mother, a single mother. These boys don't have any male guidance at schools. Growing up, I had male teachers. 80% of my teachers were male. Now I take my kids to school, 90% of the teachers are females. 90. Where is it that the men have influences by other men? So now you got a whole bunch of confused boys in school and they're talking about Andrew Tate. But it, Andrew Tate isn't the problem. The problem is you have confused boys in school. Andrew Tate is not the influence. Yes, they're listening to him. These boys are already frustrated and confused in these schools all across the world. They don't know how to act as boys because everything they do, they're told that it's wrong. And women are telling them things that they don't, they don't understand because women try to approach everything on an emotional basis. That's not how men communicate. We communicate on a different level that women cannot communicate on. So what happened? So whether Andrew Tate existed or not, you're going to get the same results in society. You're going to get the same results in these schools, but these organizations need an escape goat and he's the easiest one because of his popularity. He's the easiest one. That's the big problem. Open your minds, my friend. Open your minds, open your eyes, see what's happening. That's why we men need each other. That's why we men need to find other boys to mentor, to help them. We need networks. Mothers have to give their boys back to their fathers so that those fathers can bring up their boys to be men. I preach anti-drug, I preach religion, I preach no alcohol, I preach uh, no knife crime. Every single problem with modern society I'm against. But I'm, teaching young men, I'm teaching young men to be disciplined, to be diligent, to listen, to, What's train, wrong with this? to work hard, to be exactly like me. And I'm saying that if men grew up like me, which are hardworking and diligent and some emotional control and stoic, we're gonna have a better society, not a worse society. To sit here and say that schools in England, England, which is a failing nation, which has knife crime going through the roof, violence going through the roof, men's mental health going through the roof, and they're going to all blame me because I appeared on the internet. Once. Exactly. You sell an image of success. It's disingenuous. It's disingenuous. You sell an image of financial success correct. with a Bugatti and a cigar, but it comes with a side order of misogyny. How does having a Bugatti and a cigar come with a misogyny? Think about what this woman just said. Just because the man has a measure of success, that he should be penalized, vilified for that? A Bugatti and a cigar comes with a side order of misogyny. Does this woman even know what misogyny means? I, I don't get it. Misogyny, am I even saying it right? I've said it so often. Misogyny. Misogyny, simply, misogyny means hatred of woman. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. Nowhere, nowhere does this man in, say that men should hate other women. Nowhere have I ever heard this man say that you should hate women, that women are below you, that women are... No, never. It's mind-blowing. It's definitely a hatchet job. It's definitely she's there to discredit. She's there to get clickbait. They realized that Pierce Morgan got more freaking clout on his last interview that, with Andrew Tate 
and they want to get the same thing. But all of these mainstream TV channels are failing. They need Andrew Tate to prop them back up, bring them back into some relevance. But they're doing a horrible job here. I am asking you about things that you have said that have caused major national organizations, including the police, to worry about you by name. The, That's what I'm asking you it's about. It's not what I said. It's about what you have said that has caused such concern in the UK. And I want to put it to you that you don't really care about the harm it caused, That's not causes true. because That's not true. making controversial statements like this online has made you a lot of money. Okay, so first thing. Well, listen to what she just said. Let's break it down again from a critical thinking perspective. Making videos like this makes you a lot of money. What, what's wrong with that? She's trying to paint it as if he should not do anything to make money. He should just be an influencer and not make money. This is a lot of work. I enjoy it. It's a two-way street. I actually contribute something to you. But in, a, in return for my time and effort, because this is a lot of work, I expect to get paid back for it. So for some, idea, for some reason, BBC expects Andrew to not do it for money. But of course, when they air this piece here, the advertisers are going to jump on their channel to, they're going to make money from him. They're going to make money. They make money doing exactly what Andrew Tate is doing, which is influencing thoughts. They're not a new, they're not a news channel. They get bought out by the highest consumers. Simple. Wake up, gentlemen. Understand the programming that is being done. You need to learn critical thinking. Stay tuned. Let's finish off the rest of this. I genuinely am a force for good in the world. You may not understand that yet, but you will eventually. And I genuinely believe I'm acting under the instruction of God to do good things, and I want to make the world a better place. I genuinely believe my legacy is a good legacy, and I believe that eventually, when the legacy media catches up, they're going to understand I'm a good, positive influence. I'm not interested in damaging the world for money, because if I was interested in damaging the world for money, I could have sold drugs, or I could make rap music and encourage everyone to stab each other like all the drill artists do. Or you could make controversial statements online that attract a lot of followers who you then direct to your website, I could where make, they pay I could make to jokes. learn how I, to be sure, like you. I mean, I could, make, I could make jokes online. Who doesn't? I mean, I could make a joke online. Are you online. saying that all the controversial things you've said are jokes? No, I'm saying that these organizations and the BBC who are going to sit here and pretend that I am the face of damaging the youth is absolutely garbage. It's completely disingenuous. It makes you and money. The reason, in fact, I've seen thousands and thousands of comments and have endless emails from women Praising Doesn't the fact, it worry you? Praising the fact that their sons are listening to me. Does it not worry you? The, fact that the things I'm me. saying, does it not worry you? It would worry... It would are you worry, not concerned about it your would, influence? It would worry me if I was genuinely damaging the world. But for you to sit here and say, Andrew, you've become the most Googled man in the world, you have billions of views, and one woman, one, is now saying that her husband is I not the same man she wants him to be, when thousands and thousands of people are saying the opposite, well, then I would say I've that that's... I've presented you with case after case after case, with quote after quote after quote, of people who are genuinely concerned about the impact you're having, and you brush it off as if it's nothing. No, what you have done is come here with an agenda. You've come here with loaded questions. You've come here with things taken out of context. You come here with things that you don't understand are satirical. And then you're going to also sit and say that one woman said that her boyfriend changed when he watched one of your videos. And, and then I don't know what satirical, you expect me to say to that. Satirical, sarcastic, that's, and jokes. No, that's how you it, explain no, the comments you make. Comical. For you to sit down... Would you like to apologize for any of them? Uh, for you to sit down... And, for, for you to sit down... Uh, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's easy. For you to sit down and say that one woman said that um, her boyfriend watched an Andrew Tate video and now he won't do the dishes. Schools. Or, or whatever your, your schools, argument is. Police. And that I'm somehow the worst, most dangerous man in the world because I have a car is just disingenuous. If you actually watch the things I say, if you actually watch my comments about women, I've done long podcasts for hours long about females, talking about protecting for them, providing for them, how I believe a woman should be treated in a relationship. I've done all of that. Andrew Tate talking there to Lucy Williamson. Well, let's uh, go straight to the newsroom, go straight to our education editor, Branwen uh, Jeffries, who's there for us. And Branwen, I know that uh, over the last recent while, you've been talking to so many teachers about Andrew Tate. How concerned are they about... Okay, now they will bring in the expert to reevaluate, to hammer it home, to make sure that anyone who's been watching this excerpt, right, will never ever feel any sort of disconnect between who they should believe. Because you got to bring in the expert afterwards to evaluate, right? And of course, this expert isn't evaluating both sides. They're only evaluating 
the person they have that they're trying to paint in the worst possible light. Now I want you to watch something. Watch, watch the picture, the side shots, the B-roll. Look at how they got to paint the criminal. This is the guy that's been accused, not been charged, right? But they still got to paint the narrative of the criminal. So watch all the B-rolls in this video of Andrew being shuffled off to jail, shuffled between court, handcuffed. Watch how they paint the narrative, my friends. I want you guys to understand how you're being manipulated. All right, the B-roll is just as important. So we will we will wrap it up here with just sort of the summary by the expert. Matthew teachers have spoken very vividly of how they are deeply worried about how the language, the attitudes, the behaviors that Andrew Tate models in his content are having a far reaching influence on boys as young as 10 and 11 and certainly older teenagers. That they say is translating into a culture where casual sexual sex, sexism. Casual sexism. What the hell does that mean? Casual sexism. Listen to that word, casual sexism. Oh, I'm going to talk like a boy. Women talk like women, but boys talk like boys. And because we talk like boys, that's sexism. Think about that shit. Think about it. What is sexism? is normalized in UK schools where the kind of language that you might hear in some of Andrew Tate's uh, videos are then repeated by children back to teachers and that that along with other online content is contributing to sexual harassment in schools to sexual assaults in schools. In terms of uh, what we were just listening to uh, and what you've just said about uh concern from teachers uh, how are they actually combating all of that and uh, in terms of conversations you have with pupils what sort of proportion roughly uh, know about this sort of content view this sort of content uh, are potentially influenced by this sort of content it would be hard to find a teenager in the UK who wasn't aware of Andrew Tate and his content, whether or not they've consumed very much of it themselves, and some of them will have done. He projects this image of success, of fame, of wealth. He projects this image of success and wealth. Really? So men shouldn't look at this image of success, of fame, of wealth. Only women should? I mean, I, I, I don't get it. What's wrong with that? Wow. He projects this image of, 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 of fame and wealth, which very much appeals to young men. My mind out is just blown, just listening to this shit. You got, you got Cardi B, you got Megan Thee Stallion, you got all of these rappers out there throwing out shit shit music, the, the nastiness, the filth that's out there. You got all of these channels out there pushing the, the gay agenda and the LGBTQ, the alphabet soup agenda. And listen, I have nothing against gay people. I have nothing against any, a lot of them are my friends. I'm just trying to show you the disconnect between what the mainstream media is pushing, the agenda that they push versus what they are trying to paint this man as because he has the following he has the power that's what's killing them so when you listen to these things objectively this is how you need to come away with which very much appeals to some easily influenced young teenage boys and alongside that they are absorbing some of the other language and attitudes that he's using now schools have genuinely taken a view that they don't want to focus too much on him as an individual but rather their approach is that they try to teach about respectful language and relationships to try and give some sense of what is normally acceptable in society and to build resilience in children so that they can look at online content, content look at videos on different social media platforms and distance themselves enough to make a judgment about whether those are behaviors they should be adopting. But schools say they are fighting an uphill battle against what teenagers can see online and on social media. And this is just one part of it. 
all female teachers that don't understand how men think and how men should think. All female teachers that are trying to make boys be more like women. Do you understand the problem we have here? I don't necessarily blame the teachers. The problem is a woman cannot teach a boy to think like a man. She can't. And she don't understand male thinking. That's why I really think that every society that have kicked men out of schools are really messing up their society. Because these so-called teachers are other emotional women that are in the classrooms that don't understand male brain, the male brain. Of course, these female teachers are going to have a problem. They just don't get it. So guys, all I'm trying to explain to you is when you listen to this crap, right? You got to listen with a critical mind. I'm hoping that I can sort of get you guys to just see it with a different eye. She was right about something. It is an uphill battle because it's a battle they can't win. Unless we reach that critical point where all boys are so feminized and that will take generations, right? To the point where literally men are just walking around like little puppies. And I can assure you, society don't want that. Anyway, guys, listen, you want to see the full show because this was only a, this was only a summary of the full show. The, whole, the full show is around an hour long. Um, this is sort of just a summary. Go to the BBC website to watch the whole thing. Um, hopefully, I can get this up and running and I won't get any copyright strikes against it. But, uh, but I think it's a great learning experience for you guys to understand how we are being manipulated as men. I just want you guys to see that there is a problem. There is a clear problem of men trying to be men. There's no doubt about it. I just showed you absolute proof. Now, if Andrew Tate was guilty of anything, I would be the first one to say, eh, boss, you messed up. You got to go serve some time, you know, but I can't see it. For someone to be held under house arrest for so long and not go into prison and, not, and, and no official charges are being made shows me that there's something wrong. Let me know your thoughts. Of course, subscribe, hit that notification button so that I can start building more and more content like this because I'm going to start pushing YouTube a lot, lot, lot more. All right. I've just hit over 100,000 subs on Instagram. Thank you all that are still watching me on YouTube and also watch me on, on Instagram. But, and the reason for that is because you guys get to interact with me a lot more on Instagram because you can send me voice messages and I can send you voice responses. So that that's going really well. But I haven't been able to monetize Instagram at all, at least. And at least I do make a few coins over here on YouTube. So you guys got to support me both on YouTube and on Instagram. So I'm hoping my Instagram followers will also come over on YouTube and watch some of the long form content so that at least I can get some sort of return from this. All right. So until next time, let me know what you think. And of course, whenever you're in doubt, always ask an older man. All right. Cheers.